Please, let's sit well. Let's sit well. Let's arrange ourselves properly. I've said this over and over again. Let's sit well. Let the children move to the last seat where Mommy Aichenede is. All the children go to that line. So the adults should occupy these first three lines. Uh -huh. And one or two children workers, if there are persons like that that are around, please, you can stay with the children. Hello, children. 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 Emmanuel, Emmanuel Ekemka, sit down one place now. And uh, those of you that I know your name, if I catch you. That place you are sitting down, you must not stand up from there until service is over. Eh? Uka, Uka. You are scratching your head. If you stand up from there, that is the end. I will send you home. You won't come back here. Uka, are you hearing me now? I will be monitoring you. The moment you stand up from there, Osha, just send him out of the church gate. Yes. So, thank you, Sister Uche. Uh -huh. Good. Praise. Why do you leave this one empty? Because of camera, please. Let people sit there. And arrange yourself. Because they are recording it. This one. Let people sit there. So what we should do. The first four lines. Of all the three lines. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You are the one wasting your time. Because every of our program will be announcing to us we should sit in the front. As if sitting in the front is a crime. The Kachi, come to high table. Come to high table. Yes. Sit for front. Uh huh. First four lines. And ushers. No other person should sit behind them until the chairs are occupied. I think for now we're supposed to have known these things. For now we're supposed to have known these things. By the time they will be recording it now, they will just see that the church is empty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people are still waiting until quarter to eight before they come. No wahala. But those of you that are here already, I say God bless you. I say God bless you. I want to appreciate God for tonight. I want to thank those of you who have been consistent in coming to all this program. Both our breakthrough conference and since Monday, some of you have been coming here. One thing I want to assure you of, you will never miss your reward. As you are giving your time, your talent, your treasure towards the work of God, Jehovah is taking notice of it. And by the reason of his covenant with us, he will surely reward you Accordingly in Jesus name. We have a guest here tonight. He said he knows me. But uh, I've never seen his face before. But well, most of them knows my elder brother. So sometimes they mistaken my elder brother for me. Uh, however. We are going to know ourselves this week. By the grace of God. Praise God. But when he mentioned my father. In the Lord, I cannot say no. <laughs> because even if you call Baba Kwamuko now, that is with me. Baba will be very much excited. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Without any other protocol, let's rise to our feet as we welcome Evangelist John as a minister of the word of God to us. God bless you, sir. God bless you. 
Please can you take your seat. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God in the house. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Over? Oh my God. Is that the way to clap for my Jesus? I join my reverend to say thank you for coming. Well, I know once in uh, well, I be at Padagri district and um, by the grace of God, I've been 39 years in the mission field. 39. Reverend Isaac in Pamugo joined my wedding in 1992. And I've been working close with him. In these 39 years, I've been very close to Barista Booker, 111 clerk. And of course, we did a great job together with the general council on the decade of harvest. So, I may not be a new face because some of my members at Alakoto Church are here. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Brother Wolisa is here. And I saw another sister this evening that just welcomed me. I was so, 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 so surprised. Well, there's no hiding place. Amen. I was once in Portaco trying to pick a book from a bookstand and somebody tapped me at the back. I said, ah, daddy, good afternoon, sir. Ah, say, please, I don't know you again. Say, ah, you don't know me? You brought us up from Alakoto Church. Hallelujah. And once I invited the um, uh, evangelist Gogo, is it? Gogo? Abi? Uh, Gogo. Well, he said that I mentored him in Alakoto Church. That as he came, and the first time come I picked him up. I said, sir, I cannot remember again. It's in all those 80s. So, evangelist Gogo is my convert. <laughs> Put your hands together for Jesus somewhere. Well, I just make this introduction so that you know I am not a stranger. Right? I met uh, in 1980s. I was fully in the ministry of Umpamugo down to Reverend Ibekwe, late P.A. Ojezwa, late Amefula, as a matter of fact, the second daughter of Amefla is in my family. And then uh, the first missionary journey of Amefla to Afro was in Ajegole Church. He came to Alakoto, posted him back, he came back. So we were all together. Late Reverend D.M. Ogboso also mentored me. And then, of course, my younger brother is marrying the first daughter. So, we are all together in this. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important I give this history so that you will understand in empirical form that what God is about to do in these five days is going to be awesome. Say a better amen. I have a simple mission for these five days. The mission of my mission here by the Spirit of God is to entrench deeper the foundation that this great man of God have laid. He's a missionary by excellence. And then uh, by the grace of God, at the end of this meeting by Sunday, you will understand that God sent me here. Praise God. The mission of mission is carry no purse, carry no staff, carry no shoe, greet no man on the way. So I'm looking at my time on the eight dot. I drop the mic. But you will do me a favor by coming earlier so that we can offload 
that which God has given unto us. And finally, the methodology of my meeting with you in these five days is to raise up more structures. So I'm going to use the word of a experience on Mission KB in Bagudu Local Government of KB State, Mission Saragagana, Mission Gabon, Mission Woju uh, in Ondo State, um, where we did some. I'm going to show you pictures because pictures do not lie. So I want to be so practical. I don't want to talk about mission as somebody who is not in mission. I want to talk about mission as somebody who is in the mission field. A lot of people will talk mission out of paper. No, I'm not going to talk mission out of paper. I'm going to talk mission out of experience and by the word of God. And by the things God has done in my life. So it's going to be a practical. It's going to be empirical. And I'm not forgetting to thank the Dickens for allowing the mission officials to invite me. Hallelujah. What we want to discuss this evening is exercising ownership of the kingdom. Exercising ownership of the kingdom. You can call it becoming a stakeholder. Becoming a stakeholder. When we started mission in Alakoto, our experience is like what I'm seeing here this evening. But not to worry. But by the time God started with us, the gallery, we have a church like this. The Alakoto church, the up and down, we are all filled up because work of mission is work of God by excellence. So we are looking at this evening of a sizing ownership of the kingdom or sizing ownership of the mission of the kingdom. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It's a very popular verse of the scripture. First Peter chapter 2 verse number 9. Is it on the screen? Okay. Can we stand together as we read the word of God? Let's rise as we reverence God's word. Shall we read it together? I want to go. You don't read and finish. No, you never read it. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 9. Shall we go? Read it loud. Want to go? But ye are what? I what again? I what again? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You should show forth what? You should show forth what? That has what? But you are a chosen generation. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless it in our heart in the name of Jesus. Please take your seat. I like to read it in an NLT version. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. I ask King James, the NLT version, he said, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests, God's holy nation, his very own possession. This is so you can show others. It's very important. So you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness unto his wonderful light. The message Bible has it this way, but you are the ones chosen by God. 
chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instrument to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. Praise God. Let me come close to you because this is a family matter. I'm an evangelist, but I do not want to be an evangelist for these five days. I'd like to have a family discussion with all of us. And I tell you the truth, I will not tell you anything that I have not experienced. So this is very much practical. This is a family meeting. In your family, you are a stakeholder to the family. Am I right? Stakeholder. That's why you answer the name of the son name of the family. You are a stakeholder. If you are a male factor, including even the female factor these days, when they want to share property, they will share to you because you are a stakeholder. You have ownership of what your father has. I have some cars. My son drives anyone he likes. Do you even know what? When anyone, he spoils anyone, he pack it and then take another one. I say, my friend, the one where spoil, you go pack and you pick another one. He said, this is my father's car. You can go and drive your own father's home. So he has asserted ownership. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Church, answer me back. Am I communicating? So, you need to assert the ownership of the kingdom. And God started by saying, I chose you. I chose you out of millions out there. Billions out there. There are about 7 billion people in the world today, statistically speaking. About 7 billion people. But for the assemblies of God, Ejigo 1, there are choices God has made. And you are the choice of God. And because you are the Rakushi Kabarada, and because you are the child choice of God, you are a stakeholder to the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you. The kingdom does not belong to the unbelievers that are out there. The kingdom does not belong to the rats or cockroaches. The kingdom, please hear me well, I am telling you the truth. The kingdom belongs to you. So I am a stakeholder in the kingdom. Let me give you another example of quoted cheap companies where we have preferential shareholders. These shareholders, they, they brought money to the company and most of them are board of directors. They are stakeholders in that company. When they want to share the profit, they will give them a higher pre a profit because they are preferential shareholder. Before they give an ordinary shareholder any any, any money or anything, they will first of all give the preferential shareholder because they are the owners of the business. Am I communicating? So their eyes will be on that business. And that is why they call annual general meeting, which we call AGM. And in that AGM, they are going to tell the stakeholders this is how the business have what? Performed. And this is the, 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 the profit that we are going to share. We have declared so, so, so millions of profit. And we are going to share it according to how you are, whether you are a preferential shareholder or ordinary shareholder. With these two examples I've given, you can now begin to understand why I say you are a stakeholder in the kingdom of God. God punish the devil. You are a stakeholder in the kingdom of God. And because I'm a stakeholder, Look, I am ready to spill my blood 
but make sure that that kingdom that has been prepared for me will be arrived. Oh my God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> this church, say amen. This church be excited. Say a better amen. This church, say a loud amen. In John chapter 9, verse 4, we saw a great man, God himself, declaring that he is the stakeholder. John chapter 9, verse 4, can we go there? I must walk. Read with me now. I must do what? The works of him that what? Why it is what? Day, the night cometh when no man shall walk. This is an example of a man who is burdened, who is swallowed up with passion, who understands that he is the stakeholder in the kingdom. He is God himself. He is the kingdom himself. And, and, and look at his disposition. Oh my God. God spoke to me. That's why I am preaching this message. He said, if they can buy in into my kingdom, the mission issue is settled. The problem we are having is that so many people do not buy in into the kingdom. They thought it is the pastor's job or the deacon's job or the mission official job. No. How the stakeholder in the kingdom. And now I'm looking at the example of the chief missionary who says, I am a stakeholder. And then he put the word must and those of us who read English, you know the word must is the word must. <laughs> it's something that must be done. And look at it. Our Lord Jesus, because he saw himself as a stakeholder, he saw the word. He said, hey, this one is a phase. It's passing by. It's a transit camp. We are just walking through it to the main place where we belong. As a matter of fact, he sent you and me here for a purpose. Not to eat and drink and then we build all the houses and buy all the cars. All those ones are very good. I'm not condemning it. But that is secondary. There is a primary reason why I'm here. There is a very sole reason I am here. And it took me 38 years and I'm still on by the grace of God. Following that path, no matter what the world is talking about. Because at the end, I'm getting back to him. <laughs> I'm going back to him. No matter what I have here, I am leaving them to go and answer. Go back to where I belong. I don't belong here, I belong there. I am in the world, but not of the world. I am in the world, but not of the world. That means I'm a candidate of another city. And that was why Abraham says, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God Almighty. So, he now tag himself, squeeze himself in the corner. I must Walk the works of him that sent me. Rain is falling. It can't stop me. I made up my mind. I love that song that says, I made up my mind. I make up my mind. Mm -hmm. He squeezed himself in the corner. What is the thing Dickin thinking that thinking about? It's not my business. What is the pastor, as great as he is, thinking about? It's not my business. Ah. Pull my head and swallow it and determine to squeeze myself. I must do this work. Whether you want to do it or not, it's my personal decision to do the work of him that sent me. Why? Well, it is there. Whether you are supervising me or not, I am true to myself, I am true to my integrity. I have gone a covenant with him. I have put the word must. No matter whether the rain is falling, it is must. The sun is shining, it is must. 
Whether I eat, it is most. Whether I do not eat, it is most. Because Christianity without carrying cross is a charge. No man goes unto the Christianity without carrying the cross. You are joking. So I must walk the work of him that sent me. Why it is day. So the mission enterprise is stuck on your neck as must. That is why it is the heartbeat of God. They remove your heartbeat, you are a dead man. Remove mission from the church. The church is just dead. That's why he kept us. Otherwise, immediately we are born again, he would have taken us. He said, no, 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 no. no. There is a job. Occupy till I come. Oh, the church of Jesus. We have misplaced our priority. Thank God for this church. Thank God for your reverend minister. Who is a mission person. Thank God for all those that their body has stained with the blood of Jesus. Paul said, I remove my coat now. So now you will see the mark of Jesus all over my body. The day I feared God and decided to submit to him all totally was the day under late Reverend P.A. Ojozwa, that great, tall, mighty man of God. We needed to have a crusade, three days crusade. He called me as a mission president. He said, son, stand in for me. I am not too strong. I said, yes, sir, don't bother. I will stand for you. We went for that crusade. Miracles. People were submitting charms. Miracles, 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 miracles happened. By 2 a.m. in the night, my own died. <laughs> By 2 a.m. in the morning, my own child, while miracles were performed in the crusade ground, my own child had to die by 2 a.m. The dickies came around in the morning, carried the boy, and buried. And after they buried, God came back and said, Son, <laughs> don't ask me any question. Which factory do you manufacture a child? Shh. Don't ask me any question. Tell your wife, shh. Don't ask me any question. I'm talking about the mark of Christ all over your body. Do you have a mark? The child dying is, well, pain me so much. But the one that made me to cry. He says, son, in the evening by 6 p.m., go back again to that crusade ground. Go back again to that crusade ground. Collect the microphone from the leader of service. And says, the Lord is good. Excuse me. Excuse me, Holy Spirit. Now, what type of punishment? What did I do wrong? What type of punishment are you giving me? My own son died. Yesterday I preached. People were healed. You allow my own to die. And after the dickens buried the boy. You come back again. You have a face to come back again to me. To say I should go and say that the Lord is good. How is the Lord good when my own child died? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The problem with us is that the hard shell, you know, canal, canal, that the hard shell is called endosperm. And the hard shell of canal cannot allow you to get to the real canal. The real kernel is inside the hard shell. The problem with us is we need to be broken. Eh? Eh? You know how they break kernel? Go make noise. And then you pick the economic value of the real kernel. Either you chew it or you use it to boil it to do a noako if you are a person here. Medicinal for children. Or you can even pack it in the bag and sell it. But you cannot sell it with a newspaper. You see, my, my dear, can I tell you the truth? 
We are all this together. Let's not pretend. You need to be broken. You get too much hard share. You get hard share. Let some me for brokenness. Let some me to brokenness. So on that evening, I went again. <laughs> I wear my suit, carry my Bible. Other people were coming for condolences. And they were meeting me on the way. Ah, brother, where are you going? They were confused. Is it not, is it not this brother that lost the child? Say yes. Is it true that your son died? Yes. And then where are you going? I'm going for crusade. My senior brother called me, say you are stupid. You are mad. Something is wrong with your head. You don't know the African culture. You're supposed to stay in the house while the people will come and condole you. He didn't know the conversation instruction of God over my life. I went there. Did I say this? Excuse me, please. Can I have the mic? I carry the mic. I climb up to the podium. I balance. The Lord is good. And they shouted all the time. The tears I have not known before, the tears flooded my eyes. So take your mic and I moved out of that place. I've done what he told me to do since that day. Eh? Everything in this world, see how I carry it. Not like this. You need to be broken. Come on, your primary existence in this world here yeah, as a Christian, call is for mission. Anything less than that, you are, you are old. Otherwise, the day you were born again will just take you to heaven immediately. Be like Enoch. I like fellowshipping. But fellowshipping is like going to a filling station and collect fuel for the vehicle to travel. The church is a means to an end and not an end itself. You have a job. And that is why you are still breathing. Anything short of it. O, Y, O. On your O. And you will give account. I tell you the truth, I lie not. Whether you are a boy, whether you are a girl, whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, if mission is not your mission statement, forget it. Forget it. Any ministry you are, whether you are in the choir, whether you are a deacon, I repeat, whether you are a deacon, your ministry does not end in counting that money and settling cases. Let's take a clue from Philip. Let's take a clue from Philip. Your capacity, your, your, your operational capacity is small. Your established capacity. See your capacity very small. See, your operational capacity is very small. Your being a deacon is just a dot in the capacity you carry. You need to do more. Life is like a rubber. Stretch it and it will stretch. Many people went for an evangelical mission. He converted the Ethiopian Enoch. And from Ethiopia Enoch, the gospel started spreading to Africa. Oh yes. One conversion. You will do. Your destiny can change. The person you convert could be your destiny helper. I must walk the work of him that called me. Why it is there. Night will come. Night will come. Night will come. When operation of work is ceased, night will come. In Mark chapter 9 verse 35. Mark chapter 9 verse 35. What are you holding so dear? Then I used to hold my children so dear. But I now meant me to understand that I'm just a caretaker. So if you are giving excuses with your children, be very careful.
Sorry, let's go to Luke chapter 12. Sorry, Luke chapter 12, verse number 32. Luke 12, verse 32. Are we there? We are reading together. There's a blessedness in reading the scripture. Fear not, shall we read? Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you what? To give you what? Can you now see that you are a stakeholder? <laughs> you are a stakeholder. In other verse of the scripture, it says that the father has already willed the kingdom to you. In message Bible, he said, don't be afraid of missing out. You are my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. My life changed when I was working in Tinkan Island Port of Nigerian Post Authority. We were in a fellowship. I was a new convert. It was early 80s. And then uh, God spoke to me to do something. And I told him, I am not one of the officials of the fellowship. Please, go and speak to one of the officers of the fellowship. They are the people that are entitled to do this thing you are telling me to do. And God said to me, ask me one question. He said, but if you see a grass growing and choking the rice seed, and you are in a position to make the rice seed to grow well, are you going to leave it because you are not one of the officers of the fellowship? I said, no. You say, from today, listen, I'm telling you what he told me. He say, from today, prognose in my business. Prognose in my business. The business of the kingdom, prognose on it. Be everywhere. Prognose. I said, why? He said, because I've willed, I've already drawn my will. As a father takes down his will. And part of what belongs to me is the kingdom. I willed the kingdom to me. And I said, wow, this is very interesting. So if my father now draws a will about his estate, I should be very careful to take care of that estate because I am a stakeholder in that estate. Since that day. Eh? Since that day. At the Puknozo. As long as it's the work of God. At the Puknozo. I don't wait for anybody to tell me. This. Uh, uh, <laughs> like my very mentor. My Reverend, Reverend M.K. Ogumbola. He can never see a piece of paper. And let it go. But when he's picking it, don't dare come to him and say, ah, daddy, 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 leave it, let me pick it. You tell you, didn't you see it before? Why will you now pick it when I want to pick it? Don't worry, I am picking it. I learned a lot from M.K. Gumbola, who was my pastor, who was my mentor. I was really mentored. By more than five, six, seven great men of God. That I cannot make a mistake. I am not preaching what you like to hear. I am telling you the reality of what it is. You are a stakeholder in the kingdom. Because the kingdom has been given unto you. But God is disappointed. Lay, 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 people where I give something. Look at the way they are treating it. The estate I have given to them. Look at the way they are handling it. They are not even bothered about it. They don't even take care of it. Look at them. Unserious people. Playing like children in the market. Calling themselves in the crowd of the market. They don't even understand what they have. If they have understood what they have. That have willed the kingdom to them. They will do everything. Rain though. Sun though. Whether there is food though. Whether there is no food though. Anything that comes across their way, they will set it aside. Their eyes are on the goal for the kingdom that have been willed to them. 
Can I get a better amen at this point? Can I get a loud one? The Lord told me that if you don't understand it, you cannot do mission. It will just be like a wheelbarrow. They are pushing you. Pastor, we push you. Mission official, we push you. Nobody should push you. Nobody should push you. The reason they are pushing you is because you don't have an understanding of who you are and where you belong. You can't push me. I put my head and swallow it. God, not me and you. Well, I do not know maybe because of where God put me out from. <laughs> hey. Make no verse, so no do like me. But I am one of the most stubborn persons that God ever picked in life. I'm so stubborn. And I told him, there is no God. Because my science teacher in secondary school, as a base science student, he proved to me experimentally that there is no God. And I hooked on to it. And I came to Lagos in 1982 with a mindset, if Nigeria have not seen a guy who fly, I will be number one. Where is an old God de Slima? God de Slima was getting my gang to fly. <laughs> and I thank him. God, I don't know whether I would have been alive by today. Not in terms of being an armed robber, but in terms of to do half work to the church. Say there is God. Why is all this a bad, bad things happening? That, that, that God has no power. That's the mentality the devil showed to me. Don't do like me. Oh. God has to call dictation of examination in Malu Road to prove to me that he's existing. A stubborn boy. After passing all your wayek, you now went to put another GCE to test whether God is talking or whether God is not talking. Listen to me. I prove him beyond reasonable doubt. That I told him I will stand before prince and kings. Put, put God, put God on my neck. I will still say, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is the buying in. When you buy in, you become conjured. Unto righteousness. Nobody will, con 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 nobody will convince you contrary. You are a high flyer for God. Now the little one that do me now. My son died. He said make you go praise me. He said no. Why will I praise you? Why did you allow my son to die? Bra, 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 bra. Who are you to contend with him? Let le, Mr. Dust. Mrs. Dust. Who are you to contend with Almighty? Almighty. Who are you? Just a little bread, they remove it. They fall on and like this, like a pant claw. Oh, yes. Somebody came to me two weeks ago. A match poison. The leg was swollen. Swollen up to the stomach. I said, meet me at the night with you. And do seven days fasting before you come. Meet me. My vision. I didn't tell the fellow that a similar case has been brought to me and God healed the person. Because all this is to test his faith. You know, when somebody is in trouble, then you begin to remember Jesus. You want to test whether the reality of Jesus is in him. Or just because he's in a problem, then he wants to begin to look for solution. Oh. My brigade approach will not do that. That's why we want you to know God for yourself. Cemented, certified, cast on concrete. Can you understand this God you are talking about? Can you? Because it is not the pastor pulling you. It is not any member pulling you. You are true to yourself. Deep inside your heart, you have had a covenant with him. Nothing shall separate it. That's where I want you to be. At the beginning of this five days walk. If you don't get this. No other thing that I'm going to say. Will flow in. This is the foundation. You are meant to be a missionary. And you are one. Convince yourself. If you have not been on that page. 
stepping into that page tonight as we are about to pray. I am alive for the purpose of kingdom expansion. Listen, I love this building. Very beautiful. And I thank God for those of you who pull resources to make this very gigantic uh, project to become a reality. But much more than that. You see this one now, no go go heaven. You know? At the time we will be raptured, it will remain here. But look at what the Bible says. The saints shall die and they are, this building will follow them. Talk to me, church. The building will follow them. What will follow them? Their works shall follow them. Yeah, part of what you have done is to contribute money. Fine, well and good. There's an angel. By the way, by the way, some of us, we are singing heaven. If the rapture comes now, some of you, your own mansion will be a thick forest. Thick forest. The angel will just lead you. Oh, my mansion, my mansion, they will take you to a thick forest. Say, ah, but it's no mansion. Say, well, that's the money you contributed. It's what you contributed, it's what we used to build your mansion. Don't make the mistake. It's what you give that what they just are going to use to build your mansion. By the grace of God, I've been privileged to see my mansion. Wow! I've never seen any building in this life like it. And then just we are still working at the backyard. I said, but what are you guys still doing? He said, they are building boys quarter. The main building has been complete. It's what you contribute. So, what you contributed in building this church is part of it. But not the end of it. Pray hide says, give me Scotland or God, kill me, let me die. One man turned the entire Scotland for Jesus. One man, Scotland. Now you see revival happening in Scotland is John now. He so prayed that in his prayer he died on his knees. We'll be coming for that. Because it's a prayer that generates the body for mission. No prayer, forget mission. So, but our statement today is buy him and become a stakeholder fully into the kingdom of God. Buying if you have not totally bought it. If you are partially buying, totally buying. You know those who are, who are intoxicated with a, a habit become a habitual kingdom addict. And can I say this? If you are never a kingdom addict, you are not going to see the move of God. It's only kingdom addicts. Addicted to the kingdom. Everything about God is what tears you up. These are the people that are going to occupy the front seat in the kingdom. Not the truck pushers. Come to church. They push you. They beg you. No, 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 no. You've not understood why you are still living. My time is up. A mission will do things expeditiously. Carry no purse. Carry no shoe. Carry no stuff. Greet no man on the way. I've told you my own experience. And I could go on to tell you more. Praying for mission in Nai Vigil. In all those days, this brother can be a witness. Seven days of the week is seven days in the Nai Vigil. So one day we are praying. Praying for kingdom expansion. Praying in tongues. <laughs> and suddenly, the Spirit of God started giving me interpretation of the tongues I was praying. And the interpretation is, I'm robber, I'm robber, I'm robber, I'm robber, I'm robber. Yeah? I rang bell. Boys! Not those days we don't admit uh, girls in our prayers. It's boys. Boys, stop! There's an robber operating somewhere. Raise your prayers now. We started kabashing. Marco Ricky Mandos here, wherever they are. Oh Lord, oh Lord, deal with them. So I never know that they are doing the fellowship meeting in my own house. <laughs> the arm robber was operating in my own house. They broke my door. 
They swept everything in my room as a bachelor of them. I mean sweep. Swept everything. Carry television. The one they were not able to carry was my bed. And the table. <laughs> they carried every other thing. And they took one of the one that made me cry was my scientific calculator. Because I was to write statistics in University of Lagos. And exams were all closed. And you need that calculator to write statistics. That pained me so much. And that made me to cry. Every other thing was nothing to me but that calculator. I asked God the question, if to say I am in a clubhouse, I will understand. And they pray for that so inside their house. You still allow one robber to go to my house and they, they are doing their own prayer meeting in my own house. Ah, uh ah. -uh. How about God? Waiting now. He spoke to me. He said, go inside that bush. You will recover some of the items. Yeah. And then, clean your eyes. I'm going to give you the better things, more beautiful things than what they have taken. That was a mark. Started life all over again. Because all my goods were carried away. Doing the work of God. We are going to pray. Hear testimonies. Don't miss any of these days. Advertise this program. This program is your life. I will tell you the reason as we go on. Your life. Why it is your life? It is your life. I was telling the mission executive, mission president, I said, hey, congratulations. Mission is the first way to become a billionaire. Because God will embarrass you with miracles. You go hear testimony. Maybe you are in my house. You will hear testimony. All this money you are picking, the food you are picking in the gutter. You want to pick food from the gutter. It doesn't matter where you are. I was in the boys' quarter still doing mission. I was in Boy's Quarter when I met uh, Barista P.C. Abuka at his Western House office in, in Lagos. We sat one-on-one -on -one and discussed mission. That nine years is not that nine days. I have a lot to tell you with empirical evidence and testimonies. So stop picking food from the Gota. You are the one holding yourself. Oh, no time. I wish I will remember more as days go by. But look at this man. They see this man. I've used pepper. Grind the goosey. Put pepper. Put water. Mix it. And it was my soup to eat about. Eh? So I have seen poverty to the highest level. But when I started mission. The rest story will come later. Bow down your heads and cry unto God. You have been sitting on a mystery. If you have been sitting on a fence, make up your mind from today. Any year, anywhere you hear mission, your spirit should lift up and say, what can I do? What is there to be done? That is the time you will enter into the heartbeat of God also. Since mission is the heartbeat of God and there's only one person I know in the Bible that was sitting on the heart of Jesus and that was John Divine. You will now graduate from the twelve and from the three to the one because there is the twelve, three, one disciple relationship. When you graduate from twelve to the one aha, you will begin to hear the heartbeat. And then, of course, every other apostles died. Uh, Peter was asking Jesus, what shall this man do? He said, it's not your business to know what I'm going to do with him. It's not your business. They put him in the island of Patmos, even in the burning oil. The guy says, no, I'm not going to die because I have a covenant of life sitting on the habit of Jesus. No man. See, there's no need to pray for a long life if you are a missionary. 
<laughs> you will get to the point where you will say, Oh Lord, let the servant depart in peace. I am satisfied. You are praying for long life is because you are not busy. When you are engaged in missions, there's going to be a double security edge around about you. That will be the shout of the king in your house. The mountains, the Bible says the mountains are round about Jerusalem. Jehovah will be round about you. 24-7, the eyes of the Lord will be upon you. So no need to pray for long life. Now those who are not doing anything are busy praying for long life. You live long to do what? Accumulate more years to do what? You know the scripture says the tree that bears fruit. God dreams so that I can bring much more fruit. So you will not die any. Because God knows you are a valuable instrument in his hand. I want to hear you pray. This prayer is not praying in the heart. Oh God, I'm making commitment. I'm making commitment. I'm making commitment from you to today. The death of my child did not stop me. The death of my child did not stop me. I'm robbers. Ready my heart. Does not stop me. God punished the devil. He cannot stop me. I've redefined my name to be brother unstoppable. Brother unmolestable. Brother untouchable. Touch me, you see fire. Marukuti Mandozi. Because I've called a covenant of life with him. It's a covenant of prosperity. It's a covenant of longevity. It's a covenant. As well as I stand to do his will. The number of my years he will fulfill. Nothing shall cast down my young and my fruits will never fall off or rise. Rise on your feet. Everyone rise on your feet. I want to pray for you. You know you want to make a greater commitment to serve the Lord in mission. Yes, you have been doing it. That's why you are here. But you want to tune up. Tune on to a higher frequency. Can you run and come? I've already exceeded my time with 10 minutes. Run and come quickly. You want to, oh God, with the preaching today, I want to be devoted more, devoted more to mission. Please come, come. I am not asking you to bring money. I say, you want to be devoted more to mission. Your heart beat. You want to clean your heart more unto God. Oh Lord God of heaven. I must do this work. I must. I must. I don't need anybody to push me. I don't need anybody to push me. Children, stay there. Children, stay there. If you are not living for mission, I wonder what you are living for. <laughs> I expect the entire church to be here. Except you are telling me to tell God to take you home. Because you are no longer useful. You are like a fig tree. Full of leaves but no more fruit. I expect everybody to be here. Because we are called for this purpose. You are called. You are called. Chosen. For the work of the master. If you are coming, come very quickly. Oh my reading center. Thank you Jesus. Look at me here. I cross my chest. I have told you the truth. You may not understand. Especially the young ones. You may not understand. But Timothy was seven years old. And he understood. I crossed my chest, told you the truth. 39 years experience in the mission field. Still counting by the grace of God. God will do you good if you climb their heart onto kingdom expansion. You are the owner of the kingdom. Take a hold of it. Become a stakeholder. I don't need Reverend to tell me that the, that the company that I invested on, that they should not give me my dividend. Reverend should not stand for my dividend. So, so nobody should stand for your dividend for the kingdom. Walk. Don't look at Reverend. Don't look at mission exactly. Don't look at anybody. Walk. Be true to yourself. Be all in integrity with God. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I say lift up your hands, everyone. I've delivered the very word that you have given me to give to this one. You told me that this is a foundation for them to engage more in mission. Now that they are buying in, raising their hands, oh God, 
in surrendering unto your will to execute the project of mission by which your son Jesus came to die. Lord, I ask that you give them the grace. Now receive the grace now. Well, I don't want to start. I don't want to start. Holy Spirit, please, I don't want to start. Father, give them the grace. The burden, the burden. The burden in their heart. The burden for kingdom. The burden for soul winning. The burden, burden, burden. Without burden, men will be seen as they will be seen men as trees. Jesus taught the blind man and said, how do you see? Say, I see men like trees. No, they will not see men like trees. They will see men like men. People heading to hell and they will rescue them. Thank you, Almighty. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, well, I don't know why you are so stingy with a man. In the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, shout out a man like a thunder. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed again this night? I say, are you blessed again this night? If you are blessed as usual, I want you to do something for Jesus. Just put your hands together for Jesus Christ. If he has blessed you and you are sure you are blessed, I want you to do something for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just that you don't have time. Time is not on our side. But I want to assure you that there is still more to hear. And there are still more blessings for you. As God lives, you will not, you will not finish this program and remain the same. But tomorrow, please, I beg of us, please, let's try and come here on time. If you come here by 6 o'clock and we start, by 6.30, we hand over to our daddy. So we hear more from him. It's opportunity. So please, let's make use of it and be blessed. And I know that as many that will be present here on time tomorrow, they will be blessed more in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, let's rise up as we give our offering. Let's rise up as we give our offering. Giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. Giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he ran, he ran, he ran, giving glory to the Lord, oh glory to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, he ran, he ran, we give glory to the Lord, he ran. God bless you in Jesus' name. What do we say to our guest? It's okay. My prayer for you is that the Lord will give you understanding. That is just my prayer for this program. That the Lord will give you understanding. Please take this announcement. Very important. Very, very important. Tomorrow by 7.30 in the morning, our faith clinic. 7.30 tomorrow, our faith clinic to 9. And I want you to come with expectation. The Lord is going to heal you. The Lord is going to deliver you in Jesus' name. It has come to my notice that there are persons.